how on earth are the Jews, as a group, so good at everything they do? How many children in Middle Eastern countries that surround and generally hate Israel owe their lives to this Jew? Is that irony? Is it ungrateful ignorance? When Israel started in 1948, it was just a patch of semi-desert next to the Mediterranean. And look at Israel now. Not many people realize that it's actually a technological powerhouse. It's small, but it's a powerhouse. So to answer the question, what did the Jews ever do for us scientifically? The answer is more than many of us deserve. What did the Romans, sorry, Jews, ever do for us, scientifically? What have the Romans ever done for us? Jews make up 0.2% of the world population. Guess what percentage of Nobel Prize winners have been won? About 20% and 25% in science and the medical fields. They are overrepresented by a factor of over 100, 10,000%. Jewish people, as a group, have always done one thing that makes some people really angry. They are awfully good at so many things, and that seems to be unforgivable. And it's not just science, which is what we'll be looking at in this video. It's in music with people like Bob Dylan, Simon and Garfunkel, Rogers and Hammerstein, Think Sound and Music, or in the film Think Steven Spielberg. But also in the world of business, for examples uh, of great companies in America that are founded by Jews, we have Google, Dell Computers, Facebook, Warner Brothers, DreamWorks, Dunkin, uh, Dunkin Donuts. Well, anyway, you get the idea, but let's look at the scientific achievements of the Jews. And we may as well start with the big one, Albert Einstein, Time Magazine's Person of the Century, who was working in the patent office in Switzerland. And then in 1905, he published four papers which changed the world. His paper on the photoelectric effect pushed along the field of quantum mechanics, which is basically the science of really small things like electrons. And basically it was able to explain things which were previously unexplainable. And his paper on the relativity was the science of essentially everything that goes very fast. And he found the equivalence of mass and energy equals MC squared, and that time and space are related and warped by matter. Without Einstein, so many things that we have today would be effectively impossible. For example, lasers. Without lasers, there's no internet because we could not fire signals down the optic fibers that we need to give the massive data transfer rates that we've got today. And the GPS systems would be impossible without Einstein's work on relativity. Those signals on the ultra accurate clocks on the satellites run at a different speed to the clocks down on Earth and the, the signals need to be adjusted. Then there's electronics, which is essentially in every device you own just about. Electronics would essentially be a black art if it wasn't for the field of quantum mechanics. And Einstein worked in a time when Jews were very unpopular in Europe, especially in Germany was going to get a lot worse. But more about that later, because countries that expel Jews, well, the country is invariably the loser. So here are some other great Jewish scientists. Fritz Haber, who you've probably never heard of. His work included the development of the processes to make nitrogen fertilizers. This has been one of the huge advances in agriculture and food production. To make proteins, plants need nitrogen compounds such as ammonia or nitrates. These have been very scarce in nature and this has limited uh, crop yields for millennia. It is estimated about half of the nitrogen in the protein in your body comes out of a factory that depended on the work of Haber. Billions of people are now alive who could not have come into existence without this Jewish genius. About half the people in the Middle East surrounding Israel owe their existence to Haber. Is that irony? Is it ungrateful ignorance? Or what about Jonas Salk? He invented polio vaccines, 
People forget that polio was a diabolical disease. It often crippled children. Many ended up in iron lungs, trapped for life and dependent on a machine to breathe. How many children did Jonas Salk and his co-workers save? How many children in the Middle Eastern countries that surround and generally hate Israel owe their lives to this Jew? And he didn't even get a Nobel Prize, like remarkable physicist Lisa Meitner, who co-discovered nuclear fission and ended up getting chucked out of Germany. But many others did win Nobels. For example, Isidore Isaac Rabi worked on nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR, which is fundamental to look at the structure of organic molecules. NMR allows chemists to look inside the molecule and work out its bonding arrangements. This was a huge advance for chemists. In fact, chemists have never had so much fun. But NMR is also used in MRI scanners. And I could go on with the other 100 plus Jewish Nobels, but I want to focus on the hatred of the Jews and especially the expulsion of Jews which has been a huge own goal for all the countries that do it. For example, look at the invention of the atom bomb during the Second World War. It was a war-winning weapon like nothing else. If the Germanies had not been beaten in the Second World War in May 1945, after they'd murdered six million Jews, they would have had an atom bomb dropped on them like the Japanese in September 1945. And those atom bombs were, to a great extent, developed by Jewish scientists who would escape Germany. Germany was also trying to make nuclear weapons, and if they'd been successful, Hitler would have used it and won the war without a doubt. But in America, there was Robert Oppenheimer, a Jew who led the Manhattan Project to make the bomb. In the all-important theoretical physics part of the, the Manhattan Project, 20% of the scientists were Jews. Of the eight major groups in the project, Five were headed by Jews. Jews like Hans Bethe, Richard Feynman, Edward Teller were critical, or Leo Zillard, who envisaged how the nuclear chain reaction could work. Zillard, like many Jewish scientists, was forced out of Germany due to his Jewish background, and he ended up in England and then in the United States. Like today, in the 1930s, the greatest hatred of Jews even the great ones, like Einstein, was most redolent in the universities. Sure, the Nazis forced their anti-Semitic hatred in the universities, but they found fertile ground at the universities. Sound familiar? At the end of the war, the British captured and interrogated the German scientists who were working on their atom bomb project. They wanted to know how far the Germans had advanced, so they locked them all up in a big old mansion and installed listening devices on all the rooms. When the Hiroshima bomb fell, these scientists were given all the newspaper reports and the British listened to the conversations. The German nuclear scientists were utterly shocked at this development, the construction of the bomb. It turned out that in fact the Germans abjectly failed to come even close to getting a bomb. They had followed completely the wrong path and there wasn't a Jew amongst them. These guys they must have been seriously pissed. So, while you contemplate this happy eventuality, maybe like and subscribe. Actually, it wasn't luck, was it? And remember that it's not so different today when it comes to Jews being expelled. There is much said today about the supposed dispossession of Palestinians after Israel became a country, but it never seems to be mentioned that Jews were thrown out of countries in the Middle East 50,000 from Yemen alone, and look beca what became of Yemen. Perhaps a million Jews have been expelled since the 1940s from Arab countries and Iran. There might be just 10,000 remaining and living in terrible danger. Just think how America, in particular, gained from the Jews that went there. What a stupid mistake those Arab countries made by expelling their Jews. But that's what hate does. And look at Israel now. Not many people realise that it's actually a technological powerhouse. It's small, but it's a powerhouse. And the companies and inventions, there are just too many to list. But just as an example, the chip used to power the first IBM PCs, which was really the birth of the modern computer as used by everyday people, that chip called the 8088 was developed at Intel's laboratories 
in Haifa, Israel, like many of Intel's processors. When Israel started in 1948, it was just a patch of semi-desert next to the Mediterranean, like all the countries around it, countries that try to invade it every decade or two. But Israel alone has become a technological powerhouse that is by far the best country in the region, the most advanced and the most tolerant country by any measure in that region. So to answer the question, what did the Jews ever do for us scientifically? The answer is more than many of us deserve. So if there's ever an opportunity for a country to get more Jews, the response should be, we'll take as many as we can get. And you might also ask the question, how on earth are the Jews as a group so good at everything they do? And will the world ever forgive them for their talent?